Greetings, folks. Greetings, amigos, and greetings, gringos, um, friends, enemies, and people who actually don't really know much about what I'm going to talk about. You're the people that I'm really interested in talking to. Because there are a lot of people who think they know a lot, but all they know is uh, their state national narrative. And today I'm going to speak about that national narrative, which I call the Greek delusion. Now, I know something about the Greek delusion because uh, I witnessed it. My, uh, my uh, relatives, my close relatives, lived in that Greek delusion. Here were people who could not speak Greek, who had no link with anything Greek. However, they, they uh, uh, thought of themselves as Greek because they had been terrorised, brutalised and punished if they did not accept the Greek delusion. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up uh, in an English-speaking education system. And in that education system, there was never any indication that uh, the modern Greeks were anything but Greeks. So I grew up thinking that. I thought, yeah, OK, these people are, are really Greek. That was until uh, walking around in Greece, uh, in Athens, one day walking around, I walked into a, a, a Greek-English uh, Bookshop in Greece, near Athens, near the centre of Athens, St. Agnes Square. So I open up this book, go home, open it up, and there it is, staring me in the face. A book by Woodhouse, just the short history of Greece. And Woodhouse, he loves Greeks. Despite pointing out that they're not Greeks, he still thinks they have the right to be Greeks. Now, there's another delusional people. So there it is. He says, you know, curiously enough, uh, the fighters and founders of the Greek state were a non-Greek lot. Now, what does he mean by this, I think? A non-Greek lot. Now, at that time, I didn't know that the, 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 the soldiers uh, in ceremonial dress out the front of Sindang Square marching back and forth every now and then. I didn't know that what they were wearing was the Albanian dress. But... Thanks to that book, I did some more research. And guess what I found? I found that <clears throat> the founders of modern Greece were predominantly Albanian-speaking people who'd come there in the late, uh, latter part of, uh, or the early part, sorry, of the 15th century. That's when they came in there, or late 14 or early 15. You can Google that and find out. Anyway, <clears throat> when those people came there, <clears throat> and settled. <clears throat> they, they lived throughout Greece, uh, in Athens, in Athens. Athens was a third Albanian. The other third was Romans, self-declared Romans. The other third were Turks when it was liberated. And it was only 3,000 people, not the 4 million it is now. Because all the ancient cities of, Ath of Greece have more or less been destroyed. Now, folks, <clears throat> the first president and Prime Minister of Greece could not speak Greek. Its heroine, Bugalina, could not speak Greek. And so on and on and on. And they didn't speak Greek because they were Albanian speakers. And Albanian speakers exist in Greece and in this diaspora to this very day. They are the real delusional people. Because nobody forced them. Our people in Macedonian were forced by them to adopt their delusion, but no one forced them. So that, to me, I'm very sorry. I feel very sorry about those Greeks because to adopt something that isn't yours when you're not being forced to means that you have some form of self-hatred, that you don't hate who you are, you want to be something else. And that's what happened. Now, uh, the few, there, are, there, are, there are two things. First, there's the Albanians of Greece, and then the other point that must be made are the Slavic place names throughout all of Greece. What are you talking about? You say Slavic place names? Well, folks, for a thousand years within, within Greece itself, until they created their modern state in 1824, the names, the place names were Slavic words. Now, I don't know how that happened, folks. And that's what I want to. I want. I want people to to reflect on that. How could it be that right throughout the Greece, the Greek mainland, there were Slavic place names? In fact, the very word Peloponnese had been forgotten. That area was called Morea, the place within in the sea. Morea is Slavic for sea. 
the Albanians who created modern Greece. And people, a lot of people know this. In fact, Greeks, Greeks taught me this. I, I, I didn't come up with it. This is Greece. A lot of Greeks know. But it's taboo to discuss. And like one friend of mine over there said, look, we all know, but what do you want us to do? I said, well, what I want you to do is write it. He said, you want my marriage to stuff up? You want me to get beat, possibly killed, by for writing an article? So that's the reality of modern fascist Greek, Greece, that it protects its delusion. It has parties, parties formed to promote and protect and terrorise anyone who is not deluded into becoming deluded and thinking they're Greek. It's simple. It's a delusion if you think you are what you are not. Now, let me tell you. Now, uh, the, these Greek people, they are the founders. These uh, uh, Albanian people, Arvaniti as they're called, they're the founders of Greece. And when they founded it and had their meetings and decided they were going to be the kingdom of Hellenes and they were going to ask for a, um, a Western uh, king to be their king, they did that and they got Otto from Bavaria. Now, folks, you have to understand something. The Enlightenment, the Enlightenment of uh, the 1700s, uh, they worshipped the Greeks. They had just dis more or less not just discovered them, but they had got to the point where the Greeks were the greatest civilized European civilization ever. And one of those people in the in, in the Enlightenment, one of the figures of the Enlightenment, uh, strangely enough, was the German princess Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia. Catherine had two grandsons. One was called Alexander. The other one was called Constantine. And why is that? Because in a struggle against the Ottomans, um, Catherine uh, embarked on a, on a very ambitious project of recreating the Roman Empire so that her grandson Constantine could be emperor of the Roman Empire, recreated empire, and Alexander, her other, was a, could be the king, the, the, the emperor, the Tsar of Russia. That was her motive. So what did she do? She brought up the idea, the, the, the Greek project. It starts with her. It doesn't start in the 1820s. It starts with Catherine the Great. She sends uh, the Olaf brothers there, over there to raise a rebellion against the Ottomans. Now it failed. The rebellion failed. But the spark was, was lit. And the idea of Greece was becoming uh, um, an idea that had traction, especially in the West. Because... In Greece itself, the Arvaniti, the Albanians, and the Romans, they did not talk about ancient Greece. They talked about Rome, the Roman Empire. For example, when, when uh, they were fighting a particular battle, in, in the um, memoirs of, of one of uh, the founders of modern Greece, he writes, hey, we had to send a spy over to the Ottoman forces, and the Ottoman forces were all also out of Aniti, so they were dressed the same, they spoke the same, they looked the same, so they spend a, send a spy over there to see what the Ottomans are planning. So we have Albanians fighting Albanians to create Greece and make it independent from, from the Ottoman Empire. There's another delusion for you. But that's what happened. Now, folks, the other... The other elephant in the room, and this is a very big elephant, is what I mentioned, the Slavic place names. And somebody tell me how there can be Slavic place names in an area where there were no Slavs, Slav speakers? How can that possibly be? Well, the reality is that according uh, uh, to Western uh, travellers who are passing past the Morea, not the Peloponnese, the Morea, like uh, uh, Bishop Isidora of Seville on his way to Constantinople. What does he say? He said it's a sea of Slavs. There are only a few Greek uh, uh, citadel cities on, on the East Coast. Now, folks, that's the truth. That's not the delusion. That's the truth. Otherwise, there would not be any place names with Slavic words in them. And in fact, another great Hellenic, uh, Hellenophile um, 
who, who reckons that, Hammond, who reckons that you can't go more than a few miles either in either direction in the Peloponnese without still finding a Slavic place names. Such was the preponderance of place names throughout that whole area that despite once they formed their Greek, their, their Greek nation and uh, uh, Westerners came to create it for them and, and to teach them who they are. As Dimu, Dimu says, he says, we were happy out of Aniti and, uh, and Roman speakers until the Germans came and told us, hey, you're really Hellenes, descendants of the ancients. And the delusion began. So when, 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 something, when something is so obvious, you have to ask, who were those mysterious people that left this, all those Slavic place names that had to be changed after 1824, after Greek independence, using Western books? Because the people of the time had forgotten. They did not know that there was any other, other name for the Morea. They had used those place names for over a thousand years. And why is that? Because there were no... Greeks left. There were only such a, a small amount of Greeks left that they had forgotten the place names and that the general population did not know that there were any other place names other than the Slavic ones. Now you tell me folks how a nation full of Slavic place names can turn around and accuse me of being a Slav without looking at themselves. I don't understand that. So Greeks, why do you have such a double standard? I have no problem with you calling yourselves Greeks. Not at all. But why do you have such a double standard? Why must we, the Macedonians, jump through incredible hoops? Hoops that no other nation in the world is asked to jump through. Conditions that no other nation, no other, no other state is, is, is asked to comply with. Why must we, when the very people who are telling us to comply with these conditions don't? That is the Greek delusion. And it's because Greece was a Western creation started by Catherine the Great and finished by the Germans and the English in the, in, in the 19th century. Wasn't, wasn't a country created by Greeks for Greeks. It was, a, it was a kingdom, a Germanic kingdom created by Albanians who then turned around and slowly became Greeks. But one thing they didn't do, those Albanian people, they did not forbid, prohibit, punish anyone from speaking Albanian. That's what they're speaking, Arvanitika. They didn't do that. In Macedonia, they did. They had to force us. Whereas over there, they didn't do that to themselves. How could they? How could they forbid themselves from speaking the only language that they knew at the time? First World War. 19, I think 1917. Or, uh, uh, at some time, uh, the Greek minister of the navy has to issue an order to forbid the sailors on the, in the Greek Navy from speaking out of Anitika because some of the other people by then had forgotten it and couldn't speak it. Now, a nation of Albanians pretending to be Greeks, occupying our country, Macedonia, and forcing us to be Greeks. That's the reason why they go back. 2,300 years and refuse to talk about the present because 2,300 years ago is debatable. We'll have people debating it. Certainly they've been debating it in my lifetime and probably will continue to debate it. But we can't debate the 19th century because the 19th century is still uh, close enough for us to have records, indisputable records, in fact, in Greece, the indisputable records are in the names of their people. Folks, Greece was created as a Christian state, not as a Greek state. It was created as a Christian state. So, my fellow Greek haters, 
I know now why you hate us Macedonians, because we Macedonians, we deflect from your delusion. You point at us, therefore you don't have to look at at yourself and who you are, despite the fact that I keep running into you. Hey, a guy comes up to me and his name is Stavros Arvaniti. And guess what he tells me? He tells me he's a pure Greek. And he tells me, when I point out that Bubulina didn't speak Greek, he tells me, oh, my parents, they, 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 they speak that language sometimes when they don't want us kids to understand and my grandparents talk it all the time. That's the reality of modern Greece. A delusional people who've been sold the greatest story other than the Jewish story, the greatest story ever told. They're not chosen by God, but these people are chosen by the West as the greatest European civilization. But are they? That's, a, that's another topic that I will go into another time. But right now I have to reiterate again. How can a people with no links with their ancient forebears complain about other people and insist that other people can't be whatever they are unless they have links with the ancient forebears? In France, most people don't have any links with the Franks. I said this last time, but you, you guys ignore it. So stop ignoring it. I want you to, to wake up to yourselves and ask your grandparents what it was like growing up as Albanians in the 50s. In the meantime, next week, guess what I'm going to talk about next time, folks? I'm, I'm going to... I have to I have to go down and, and have a look at who the ancient Macedonians were because the Greeks tell me that Macedonia has been Hellenic since ever. 4,000 years, 5,000 years, 10,000 years. Another delusion. Thanks for listening, folks. Um, don't believe me. Google. Google the Arvaniti of the Greek Revolution. Google the Slavic place names of Greece. And one more, one more thing that really disappoints me is what happened to the Greek left? The Greek left whose parents and grandparents fought fought for us Macedonians to have the right to self-determination. Now the Greek left has become even more fascist and anal about its delusion than the Golden Dawn. But I'm going to stop here because I could go on all day about the Greek delusion because I'm confronted with it. I'm confronted with it by relatives. I'm confronted with it by the Greeks in Melbourne, by the Greeks in Athens, by the Greeks in Hydra, by the Greeks in Aegina in Spetses, by the Greeks everywhere who do not want the world to know that they are not Greeks. Thank you.